morning, everyone. At this start of the service, I'd like to welcome Bob Polk and Don Dotsert. They will be sharing their musical talents with us this morning, and we'll be hearing the first one before we start our service. Thank you. <laughs> Begin our service this morning with our call to worship, and you may remain seated. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with the perseverance the race that is set before us. You, Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. 
Welcome to everyone this morning. I've just got a few announcements. First off, I'd like to thank Bob Pope and Don Dotson for being here today and sharing their musical talents with us. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Our Care and Support Committee is planning a takeout ham dinner at noon on Tuesday, November 30th. Tickets will be sold on Sunday mornings or through Kim at the office during regular office hours. The price will be $10 and more details will be coming next week. Today, Pastor Rick is helping Pastor Bonnie in her shared ministry journey. <clears throat> he is doing two services in Moserville and Milverton, and Pastor Bonnie will be doing one in, ba in Baden. So I'd like to thank Pastor Bob for his assistance here today in Pastor Rick's absence. Thank you. Next Sunday, November 7th, there is a shepherding meeting following the service. And just a reminder that the clocks fall back one hour next Saturday night. Also next Sunday, November 7th, Pastor Rick and I will be attending a Remembrance Day service at the Tavistock Legion. He will be laying a wreath on behalf of the Tavistock Ministerial, and I will be laying a wreath <clears throat> on behalf of the Congregation of Trinity Church. At this time, I'd like to ask Pastor Bob to come up. He's got some family introductions to make. Thank you. Good morning. Every year uh, in my family, we four siblings get together. And it happened to be that this year uh, they decided to come to Tavistock because our mother was from this congregation and, our, and her parents, of course, are buried in the cemetery. So we were going to meet here today and I'd like to take a time to introduce them to you. My, my sister Gail, my sister Ruth, my brother Dave, and uh, there's some add-ons too because uh, being so close and with COVID, some other members of the family wanted a chance to visit with them. So uh, my grandson Daniel and his wife Maria and I saw my daughter Barbara May and Randy come in somewhere. Oh, they're signing in. There they are back there. And I expect one more daughter to show up, Catherine. Anyway, uh, these are the strangers in your midst today, so please welcome them. Does anyone have any other announcements? Yes. Seeing none, we'll just take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise as you are able for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is, saint, is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and apprehension. We exploit the earth with apathy and grief. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the scriptures. The first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. The renewed covenant will not be breakable, but like the old covenant, it will expect the people to live upright lives. To know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and needy. The renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord will forgive iniquity and not remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The reading. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. We will now do Psalm 46 and uh, have first responsibly. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved. Though its waters rage and foam, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be broken. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. Lord of hosts is with us. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world. Be still then and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. Paul's words stand at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human beings make themselves right with God through the works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin, 
and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. The reading. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. We will now hear another musical selection by Bob and Don.
Well, I noticed that I skipped a hymn. You'll hear the gospel reading, and then perhaps we can sing that hymn, John, A Mighty Fortress. As you are able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel is acclaimed with the words of Jesus. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, I will make you free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a permanent place there forever. So if the son has made you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Now we join in a mighty fortress.
Reformation Sunday. I wonder what you thought when you read in the worship guide today as you came in the words Reformation Day. It's always been a challenge to me whenever Reformation comes around to ask the question, what does it mean? What message does it have for us? What's it all about? And uh, I did ask one person about this, and uh, that person said, well, it's something about getting forgiveness of sins. It's much more than that. Well, today I wore black, not because I'm dressing for Halloween. Uh, this is what they wore at Luther's time. And I was pleased when I came in today and put on this robe, somebody said, you look like a Roman Catholic priest. And that's exactly what Martin Luther was. As time went on, of course, he changed. So in searching for some meaning for Reformation for us today, I went through my library and I brought a bunch of books. Now, I'd like to read them all to you, but I know you couldn't take that, and I couldn't either. How do we remember Reformation today? Around the time of the centennial, uh, one of our Lutheran people by the name of Martin Marty wrote a book on the life of Martin Luther. Uh, again, to try to bring us some message of what he's all about and what he brought to us. And uh, he makes note at the end of his book that in the millennium they chose the the hundred most important people of the millennium, and number three was Martin Luther. So what's so important about him? Well, I have another book. This one you might enjoy reading. It's the history of the Reformation in Germany. Uh, it took me a, a year to read this book uh, because I could only read so much and then I for, was beginning to forget what I was reading. And, but I found it interesting because it talked about the history of the Reformation in Germany. It didn't talk about a Lutheran Reformation. In fact, the name that was given to those who followed Luther was that they were evangelicals. They were people who proclaimed the gospel. And that was uh, the whole, whole message of this book from beginning to end, was to bring us, to help us recognize this. This fellow concludes with this kind of a statement. They had no desire to shake the foundations of political and social life as actually constituted their only object was to emancipate themselves from a hierarchy which, exclusive and worldly as it had become, still laid claim to absolute and divine authority. So the Reformation was to wrestle away from the powers of the earth the divine authority that really belonged to all the people. On one special occasion in my life, uh, some dear friends gave me a book called Martin Luther. And what it is, is ex excerpts from Luther's writings. And uh, I found that book both fascinating to read. You can maybe see these little tabs on here. Every time I find something interesting, I put a tab in there. But ask me now if I remember what they are. I have to go back and reread the book. But one thing that he mentioned in here and quoted from Luther's writings is some of Luther's attitude toward the sacrament that we celebrate. We must be careful to begin by setting aside all the later additions to the first simple institution. These additions have been made by men's devotion and through their zeal 
and include such things as vestments, ornaments, chants, prayers, organs, canticles, and the whole pageantry of things visible. And we know that in our celebration of communion, we often include all these things, and sometimes they just hide the word that's present. And Luther's emphasis, of course, was to get into the word, to hear what the word had to say well. The most recent that I know of is a book on Martin Luther written by a woman. And I think it's a great one. It's a, the title is Living, I Was Your Plague. Now, these were words that Luther spoke from his deathbed more than once about to the Pope. Now, I'm not talking about the Pope who is with us here today. His music is fantastic. And I think if Luther here, he would, were here, he would jump up and down at hearing the mighty fortress played the way you played it, Bob. Now, he was talking about the Pope that was present in his age. And his message to the Pope was, living, I was your plague, O Pope. Dead, I will be your death. And that's pretty characteristic of Luther. Uh, this gal calls his, his uh, makeup one of toxic, mascu toxic masculinity. Uh, he was uh, quite a character. And uh, he was anti-Semitic. He was anti-Pope, and uh, those things came out later in the year when he was conflicting with his own life and the scriptures and everything involved with it. So what's it all about? Well, I come back to the very first of the 95 theses that Luther wrote. When our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, Repent, he willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. Now, through the years of history as our church life has developed, we often think of repentance as being, you've got to be sorry for your sins, you have to remember your sins, and you have to know that God forgives you. This is not the meaning of this word, repentance. And I have a fear that many of us are trapped in that way of thinking so that the joy of being God's people is taken from us. Repent. Repent means turning to God with all one's being. It is the one and only imperative in Jesus' preaching of the kingdom of God. And our repenting establishes relationship with God, a very good relationship. When we repent, when we turn to God, what do we see? What do we experience? What do we come to know? God is embracing us with joy, forgiveness, acceptance, justice, mercy, life forever. This is God revealed to us in the scripture. This is God Luther discovered. And this is God in whom we all rejoice today. Repent comes from a word that means to direct one's mind to a subject. It's using our head. Repentance is a conscious turning to God, not just a feeling. Perhaps our first response of faith we are reminded by the writer to the Hebrews, by faith we understand 
the worlds are prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that were not visible. So, what good does a life of repentance, of turning to God, do to us today? when we are confined to living according to COVID-19 protocol, when we have to contend with working, with a working situation that is continuously stressful, when we are faced with losses of friends, family, employment, education, when we are quite happy with the way things are, and when we are troubled with illness and the need for care, and you could probably add to this list. Repenting, turning to God, does something. It ignites our souls, and we are awakened to the holy, saving presence of God, giving life to us in the midst of those things that trap us. This is the life that Jesus brought. It's all ref also reflected in the psalm that we read today. God is our refuge and strength. Perhaps a better tr translation would be to say, God is our shelter and strength. And then we go on to verse 11 where it says, be still and know that I am God. Sounds like you're saying, stop what you're doing and pay attention. No. A better translation might be to say, let go. Let go of all those things that are troubling you and know that God is with us. Let go of all those things that trouble you and then turn your mind to God. This has been God's position, God's attitude, God's place with us right from the day of creation. Jeremiah reminds us of it when he speaks God's word to the people of Israel in the midst of the fact that they had deserted him and seemed lost without him, and he invites them to repent. I will seal with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah a new covenant. I will put my law, I will put my teaching in their midst and on their heart. I have inscribed it and I will be their God, and they will be my people. This is the recognition of repentance. And Jesus was the visible presence of God's repentance and God's covenant of grace among us. Through his death and resurrection, culminated in the fulfilling of another word of another prophet, Joel, who said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And thus we too know God and live repentance lives in the kingdom redeeming us in our human weaknesses. Although we turn our mind to God, we cannot comprehend it all because our spirit, our soul, is also part of it, and our being is drawn into it. So we hear the word of Jesus today to those from, who were children of Abraham. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And in this world, it's very difficult for us to know a sense of freedom. 
But if we continue in the word of Christ, as the scriptures bring, to, bring it to us, we become free. We live repentant lives. Now, one of those apostles who went through a very serious repentance was St. Paul. And he writes to us in the book of Romans, there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now, just, they are now justified by his grace as a gift. None of us is lost to God. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice by his blood, effective through faith. And we all have faith. Well, another book. Our Lutheran Church in, a, in America, after the 500th anniversary of uh, the Reformation, put together a Bible. It's called the Lutheran Study Bible. Maybe some of you have it. And in the middle of it, they give us a bit of a biography of Luther. And what I really appreciate are these words, in spite of everything else that is said and thought. Luther no longer saw God's righteousness as the righteousness by which God judges us, but rather as a way God justifies us. That is, puts us in right relationship with God. Gives us repentant lives that we might live them and know the truth and the truth that makes us free in spite of all the things that we have to contend with in this world. I don't know if any of you can see it. But on the altar is a tiny little statue of Luther. It was made by Playmobil. And it was the most successful enterprise that Playmobil had ever done. I hope the Reformation does not turn into a piece of kitsch, but that it becomes something whereby we can nurture ourselves and recognize recognize that we live lives of repentance and that life goes on forever. One more book. Norman Hobble, who came as a professor to the seminary just before I left there, was another kind of Luther person whose passion was for the gospel, that people would know this intimate relationship with God that would give them life. Norman Havel went and spoke to young people, and he came home saying, this was a real flop. I didn't communicate with them. So he went out and he talked to them. And then he wrote a book of their stories. Actually, it's something that could be turned into a, a kind of operetta. Every one of them had a song. And I'd like to read you Mike's song. I know we spin on earth beneath a dancing sky. I hear a word from God that frees a man to fly. I feel the bones of slaughtered sons 
will soon arise, for I believe that Christ is changing everything, 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 everything. I hear the tulips laugh beneath the winter snow. I've seen how little children make their parents grow. I'm sure that miracles can set the heavens aglow. For I believe that Christ is changing everything, 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 everything. I sense an unseen world beyond the swirling sun. I look for mysteries that haven't yet begun. I trust in hands of love to heal the wrongs we've done. For I believe that Christ is changing everything, 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 everything. I know men give their, give their eyes to those who lose their sight. I've seen men take his holy meal and dance all night. I want to celebrate my death with all my might. For I believe that Christ is changing everything, 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 everything. Amen. Church is one foundation.
rise as you are able and we'll join in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I'll sing our offering hymn, the first verse of We Give Thee But Thine Own. Continue with our offering prayer. Let us give thanks for the generous giving to our church this week through mail, e-transfer, drop-off, and through the offering plate. Let us pray. Receive these gifts, O God, and use them to reform this community of faith as you remake the world in your image. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. That free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who govern throughout Canada. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide teaching and learning and confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us who dwell in your holy habitation. 
Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Today we remember especially Lila Wilhelm, Mabel MacDonald, and Beatrice Youngblood. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly pray, place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. If we love one another, God lives in us and God's love is perfected in us. Therefore, let us pray confidently the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Join in our sending song, Amazing Grace.
living in the light of Christ. By the power of the Spirit, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.